Hello everyone and welcome to Counselor Future Friday. I'm your host, Brian Urban. In these features, we hope to give you some simple tips, tidbits and tricks to make your days easier and your patients happier. In this feature, we're going to talk about invoice options. This is an administrative area where you can set a lot of your preferences specifically around invoices. So to get to this screen, we'll click on administration in the top menu bar and then select invoice options. All right, there's a lot of different options in the screen. And just to kind of preface this, the counselor support team is happy to walk you through any of these areas. Um, if you have any questions or if you're having specific issues around your invoices, we may direct you back to the screen and give you some guidance as to how to bet the, best set this up based on the scenario you're presenting. Uh, but let's kind of go through it quickly here. So uh, starting right at the top here, there is the option for the next invoice number. Uh, this will show what your current uh, invoice number is. If you're a brand new clinic, it'll start at one. Um, you, of course, can modify this. So whether you are a new or long-standing uh, clinic, if you wish to edit this, you certainly can. Maybe you want to start at 2000, right? You can change it to whatever you wish. Now, the feature right next to it is a lock feature. This is basically saying that when an invoice is created, you can lock it so that way the uh, invoice number cannot be edited. Generally speaking, this is good practice. Uh, there may be scenarios where you do not want to have this in place, but on the whole, it's generally a good idea to keep this locked just so people don't inadvertently change uh, an invoice number. Uh, going next here to the invoice due date. So this gives you the ability to set an invoice due date automatically. Um, so it sets the number of days. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and say, in this case, we'll say our due date is 45 days. Right? Obviously, you can pick whatever you want there. The next section is for invoice locking. Uh, I do encourage you to watch the video tutorials on invoice locking if you have any questions about this. Uh, but there are a variety of features here where you can set um, the delay at which, well, first off, if an invoice locks and the delay at which that occurs, whether that's manual or you set a specific number of days. Um, like I said, the tutorials on that topic cover more, uh, more detail in that area. All right, then on to advanced options. Um, this gets into a lot of the nuances to how um, invoices can essentially auto-populate or features can automatically activate. Um, so for example here, uh, set, line item, uh, set line item is claimable. Uh, basically, if you have this checked, it'll say that, hey, if, um, if there's a billing code associated with a line item, so a product or service, then uh, counselor will automatically set, that, uh, set it as billable to insurance. Okay, so uh, this comes into play a lot in the super bill to invoice uh, migration process, meaning you've created your super bill and now you launch the invoice from the patient visit screen. In that transition, taking that super bill information and building the invoice, then counselor is able to look at and see, hey, does this have a billing code? If so, let's go ahead and set this as insurance um, billable. And then right on the tail of that is, okay, well, if it says billable, do you then want to uh, put the full amount as insurance responsibility? So if you take um, uh, an audio, audio, audio evaluation, a 92557, for example, let's just say it's billed out of $50. When that uh, item is added to the invoice, it'll look and see, all right, there's the code 92557. The amount billable is $50. Let's put that $50 billable to insurance, right, instead of being patient due. And then, of course, as you go down the line, once the you know, claim is, is submitted, it's adjudicated, remitted, it comes back to you, then the insurance responsibility can be uh, figured out, whether that was fully covered by insurance, probably not, uh, or you know, if there's a remaining portion for the patient or a secondary insurance. Okay, so once again, these two things really kind of go in tandem. They don't have to both be checked. Uh, there are different scenarios where you may want these uh, uh, active or inactive. All right, so uh, the next section is apply payment. So this is a feature, of course, within the payments tab of the invoice that enables you to um, basically say, hey, if I took a $50 payment for um, from the patient and I have two items on the invoice, one that costs $45 and one that costs $5, you can apply that payment to those items, right? Or, or really one item if there are uh, five things on the invoice, for example. Um, so that's always available. This tool enables you to require it. And so in order to accept the payment, you have to uh, apply the payment to specific items. And the, and the apply payment in general, that tool can be very helpful when you're looking down the road and saying, hey, I have an invoice here with five items on it. What has been paid of that, right? It allows you to, to kind of connect the payment directly to uh, the specific products or services or partial payments, okay? Uh, the next option here is adjust quote dates. This is where if you have uh, an invoice set as a quote, 
And then at some point later on, you switch that from quote status to, let's say, not paid. That would be the most, one of the most common um, invoice statuses you would change it to. What it automatically do is take, uh, it'll take the, uh, it'll update all the item dates uh, with the invoice date. So basically, like if you gave a patient a quote today, and then in three weeks they say yes, I'm ready to move forward, by changing, you know, having this uh, activated and then changing the um, the uh, status from quote to not paid, it then would update all the line items with the invoice date. So you could say, hey, let's move this invoice date out to today or, or you know, I'm sorry, to three weeks, and it'll then shift all of your line item dates so you don't have to go through and change each hearing aid uh, uh, date and then the um, uh, charger or the remote date, for example. Okay. Uh, the next option here is display L&D costs. So this controls uh, whether the L&D replacement cost displays on the invoice. So just based on your preference, right? If you want L&D costs to display, or yes or no, you can make your choice there. All right, so now when we talk about the structure of the invoice itself. So when you print out um, or display something on a screen, how does that invoice look? Now, these options really do relate specifically to you know, printing out in, in most commonly. Um, because oftentimes you want your invoice to be able to go into your pre, you, the, the, the envelopes that you've purchased, right? If they have the viewing windows in different places, we want the invoices and counts to be flexible so you can, you can make them fit how you want. So here we go first with the recipient uh, address window. So this is the one, of course, right in the kind of center of the, um, what ends up being the center of the envelope. Uh, and so you basically can say, hey, is there no address window? Uh, is it left aligned, right aligned? Uh, if there needs some tweaking, there's the ability to uh, kind of modify the margins here. Uh, once again, this is an area the counselor support team can give you some advice on. Uh, because there are times, of course, you fold up your invoice and it, oh, it's so close, right? Uh, and maybe you can modify the fold, maybe you can't, um, uh, but the modifying the margins can assist with that as well. And then we go to the return address window. So this is the top left um, option. So now we can say, you know, no address window, upper left-hand corner, once again, tweak the margins as well. So very quickly, you can get your invoice set up so that you can you know, easily get it in the envelope the way you want uh, and displaying consistently through those windows. And then the last option here is regarding you know, the font size, the, I'm sorry, font, font size, and margin uh, around the invoice itself. Now, of course, with any of these changes, go ahead and click Save. That will lock in those changes for you, and you're ready to move forward immediately. So these changes would take effect right away with any new invoices uh, that you create. Uh, or in the case of, you know, the invoice window, uh, font size, that would occur for an existing uh, invoice that you've already created where you want to print off a statement. All right. So, of course, with all this, if you have any questions, please give us a call, email us, live chat with us. We are always happy to help. Thank you very much for joining us today's Counselor Feature Friday. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.